Hi, my name is Lisa Schomburg, and I'm a PhD student in electronic arts at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York. And my, my talk is called Listening to Insect Agency, Reconsidering Relations Through Ecological Sound Art. I'm a composer, percussionist, and environmental sound artist, and I make music and sound art based in ecological research with a focus on cryptic sounds of insects and other invertebrates. And I've been performing and touring a touring musician for over 20 years in some of these bands. I have a background in environmental studies and ecology with a focus on entomology and myrmecology, which is the study of ants. And I'm interested in ecological sound art and music as a means to get to know insects. I believe this is especially important in a time when the media narrative about insect collapse is overwhelming and catastrophic as illustrated by this New York Times magazine covers. I believe it's really important to listen to insects at this time when the media narrative about insect collapse is overwhelming and catastrophic, as illustrated by this New York Times magazine cover. And the story is also oversimplified. Rather than broad collapse, insects are undergoing drastic shifts, and some of them are even flourishing, such as these um, spotted lanternflies that you can see in this text from my mother. They're covering her window. This overwhelm about insect collapse is, is exacerbated, exacerbated in Western societies by a socialized narrative of fear and avoidance. And we have become very disconnected from the insects in our shared environments due to a large part to pesticide use and homogenization of the landscape and a legal system that deprioritizes their protection. If we are to rely on anthropocentric rationale alone, Insects' critical roles should be ample evidence to pay more attention to them. They're critical to ecosystem function as soil turners, seed dispersers, pollinators, herbivores, and in endless variations of symbioses with other species. And so I'm interested in how we can shift our relations with insects in our daily lives through listening and move beyond this anthropocentric rationale. So a little bit about my practice. Um, the main musical outlet for my work is Secret Drum Band, a six piece percussion and electronic ensemble. And then I have two other groups, WOW, which is based in Brazil, where I do a lot of my work, and Antenna, which is an improv group based in upstate New York. Since the start of the pandemic, I've shifted to other means of production as well, such as spatialized sound work, like that I'll present in the concert tomorrow night, and that I worked on at MPAC, back at RPI. And I've also been writing text scores focused on invertebrates. In this paper, in this talk, I present two ecological sound works that feature insects prominently, HVAC and Firmiphony. These two sound works are the product of ADA, which stands for Amplifying the Tropical Ants. It's the name of a genus of leafcutter ants, but it's also the name of our project, based in Manaus, Amazonas State, Brazil. And it's in collaboration with entomologists Fabricio Baccaro, Erica Valle, and Tainara Sabrosa, who are co-authors on this paper. We collaborate throughout the research process and produce both artistic and scientific results. And the significance of our location can't be overlooked because the, the ant diversity in the Amazon is incredible and the Amazon forests that these ants are integral to are integral to global climate regulation. And so in a way we are connected to these ants and their work in our daily lives through our consumption of different products um, and through the air we breathe. So these works focus on cryptic insect sounds that are beyond the limits of human hearing ability without the use of technology. And I choose to use the word cryptic rather than hidden because of its significance in entomology to refer to species that are camouflaged in the leaf litter or to species that are difficult to distinguish taxonomically. And by bringing insect cryptic sound to the foreground, we're emphasizing how much we do not know about their parallel sound, work, sound worlds. Some of the sounds I look for are ultrasonic sound, substrate born vibration, I should say that I listen for. Um, spatially inaccessible sounds, very quiet sounds, sounds that we do not know exist, and sounds that even after I hear them, we still don't know who's making them. Um, and so I'm really inspired by Pauline Oliveros and her encouragement for us to push our listening to edges. And she said, listen for the least differences possible to perceive, perception at the edge of the new. So as you can see here, sound production in insects, um, there's a lot of different insects that produce sound higher than the limits of the frequencies that we can hear above 20, 20 kilohertz, such as butterflies, ants, bush crickets, grasshoppers, cicadas. 
I'm also inspired by Hildegard Westerkamp's writing and work and how she emphasizes the ability, as a lot of people have been talking about in this conference, of art and music to communicate things that can't be spoken. Um, so she says, the sim seemingly simple act of listening to the environment often leads to unexpected complexities of thoughts, sensations, and emotions that are not quantifiable or measurable. Back to Pauline Oliveros, I'm really interested in ecological sound work and these works I produce prompting oralization as she defines it, inner sound and sounding or sounds and sounding perceived subjectively through inner listening. So not only coming to know that these sounds exist and perhaps enjoying them, becoming curious about them, but after the fact, hearing them in your head and then being out in the world and imagining that they might be there in your oralizing. So um, as you've seen in the installation that's up in the dining building, um, ants have a stridulatory organ, like they've shown so amazingly up there. That's one way that they make sound. They also, some ants make percussion. They make sounds through locomotion, biting, and different means. Here is a, images of a stridulatory file on the body of an ant. They sense stridulation in particular through, sub, through the substrate with their subgenual organ, and they also sense sound through the Johnson's organ on their antenna. So my scientific collaborators are focused on stridulation, but I look at all types of ants making sound and also the sounds of their associates, so insects that we find in their environments. Here's, oops, these microphones might be familiar to a lot of you guys. Um, we use the Jez Riley French C series as the primary microphone for recording at Bates. Um, I use different kinds of contact mics in addition to that, a Dodatronic ultrasonic mic, that's one of our baits, and the geophones to record um, low end sounds at ant nests and in their habitats. And so in this, we're using at, this, at each recording, multiple microphones in multiple configurations in these habitats to capture different kinds of sounds in these places, to think about what are the ants hearing, what are they sensing? Um, so the first piece I'll talk about is called HVAC. All of the sounds in this piece were recorded from within leaf cutter ant nests on the university campus in Manaus. Um, and so the two main field recordings are of the air conditioning system right near the building and of the leaf cutter ants stridulating and moving in the nest. Um, and in this work, as well as the other work I'll talk about, anthropophony is included and this in, instead of avoided or excluded to position humans as actively engaged in emergent ecologies where we are participants rather than intruders, controllers, or spectators. So insects are considered equal agents in these ecological relations. The specific genus that's featured in this piece is Acromyrmex for anyone, any entomologists out there. Um, and the composition features stridulatory sounds made by the ants and this air conditioning sound and then my friend Jane Pike and I improvise in response to these sounds in a gesture, a symbolic gesture of attempting to understand and learn about their communication and their living space through the sound of that space. And, um, I'll and this is part of a series of works called spiels that I've been developing. I like the notion of thinking of insects as having spiels just as humans might. They have things that they want to get said that they repeat and that they get across to their associates. Um, so I'm going to play this.
So um, drums and voice I considered as ideal instrumentation for the task of in this improv improvised response because of their um, flexibility in denoting rhythm, mood, and timbre. And um, so I'm curious in this piece about like what effects the juxtaposition of the air conditioning with the ants' communication sounds has on their lives and what, what effects can recognition of the soundscape have on listeners of this work? So for Miffany is the second piece that I'll talk about. This was commissioned for BBC Radio 3, right in the beginning of the pandemic. And um, it represents the sound of ants. It puts the sound of ants in the foreground of a 13 minute soundscape composition that takes us from dawn through evening in Adolfo Duque Reserve in Manaus, Brazil. Ants are amplified and juxtaposed with the dominant soundscape of this tropical forest to portray their sound in more accurate proportion to their intrinsic value and roles as ecological agents. The composition, composition includes sounds from over a dozen ant species, including locomotion of several ar army ant species, percussion sounds from antenna and mandibles, biting of microphones and cables, and various forms of ant stridulation. Some stridulatory recordings had a significant ultrasonic component and were played back at a lower frequency to bring them into our audible range. And um, so, um, and there's this concept of the ontological amphibian that scholar Eben Kirksey talks about, and he talks about it in particular in applications to this ant ectotoma, which is in this piece, it's a solitary forager. And the ontological amphibian he defines as like a species that can really make use of a different, a bunch of different kinds of habits and niches, habitats and niches, basically like a generalist, right? And so I, in this piece, I'm extending this idea of the ontological amphibian, ectotoma, to other ants too that can exist um, juxtaposed with human sound. So I include human sound in this piece. Um, in the sample I'm playing, I think you hear machete, these are all sounds I heard while I was out recording ants. Um, and so they exist there and we can, I don't think we should pretend that they don't um, exist. So I'll play this. As I continue this work um, in Brazil and elsewhere, so I, I'm also recording ants in New York where I live and I'm actually going on a field recording trip to Alabama next month. If anyone has any tips about the Delta, please let me know. But um, I'm really interested in continuing to explore this idea of what ants are hearing and interspecific inter and intraspecific sonic relations of ants and their associates. And after I did that recording in the nest, I became really curious about how nest architectures affect ant sound. And um, so I've been reading up on Walter Schinkel's work. He lives in Florida, actually, and done a lot of work on, in, on ant nest architecture. And so I'm gonna be really looking to that in my work and in the development of interactive music composition systems that focus on ant microhabitats. So that's what I'm developing. And um, so perhaps a productive first step and improving our relations with insects is noticing them, and as I argue in this paper, listening to them. In this consideration of our critical relations with insects, the argument that insects should be recognized for their intrinsic value is unfortunately a radical idea in most Western capitalist societies. The two works discussed in this paper prompt audiences to listen and receive new information about insects with a focus on ants, a relatively approachable group. 
by presenting insects in the foreground, emphasizing their agency and speculating about their listening positionality and simultaneously positioning humans as equal soundscape participants, not directors or anything. We are encouraging listeners to reevaluate their assumptions about insects in their own environments. So an ecological sound art um, is by definition a political art form, a socially motivated art form, and when presented publicly has the potential to subvert dominant social narratives concerning insects by challenging notions of anthropocentrism. So a lot of people have been talking about this week. And so listening can prompt others to listen as well, and perhaps collectively we can push against the dominant feelings of fear and anxiety around insects. Perhaps we can move towards that discomfort in which Hildegard Westerkamp has called the disruptive nature of listening in listening to and with insects. So, oh, I went over. Oh, these are pretty cool. These, oh, I won't play. Can I play this one? Oh, no. These are army ants. <laughs> 